Welcome to our latest documentary, NASA made new amazing discoveries on Jupiter's largest moons. We are here today to discuss the incredible findings from NASA's recent exploration of Jupiter's moons. In this documentary, we will discuss NASA's discoveries on the four largest moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. We'll explore what these discoveries mean for our understanding of the solar system and our place in the universe. So if you're ready to embark on this exciting journey of discovery, then let's get started. Before you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment to let us know what you think about the documentary, Discoveries on Jupiter. Io NASA's exploration of Jupiter's moons has yielded some of the most amazing discoveries in recent memory. The first of these discoveries were made on Jupiter's innermost moon, Io. Io is the most volcanically active moon in the solar system and is home to hundreds of active volcanoes. NASA's exploration of Io revealed that the moon is a dynamic and ever-changing landscape, with new volcanic eruptions occurring regularly. These eruptions are so powerful that they can be seen from Earth. The discovery of Io's auroras was made in 2016 by a team of researchers from the Southwest Research Institute SWRI. By using the Hubble Space Telescope, the team was able to observe that Io was displaying intense auroral activity that was much brighter than what is seen on Earth. This is due to the fact that Io has its own magnetic field, which is something that Earth does not have. The magnetic field of Io interacts with the charged particles that come from the solar wind, resulting in the creation of an auroral display. The solar wind is a stream of charged particles that are constantly escaping from the Sun. These particles consist mainly of protons, electrons, and alpha particles. These particles are constantly bombarding the planets and moons in the solar system, and most of them pass right through without any effects. However, when these particles collide with a magnetic field of Io, it causes them to be drawn towards the moon and become trapped in its atmosphere. Once the particles have been trapped, they become accelerated. This acceleration causes them to emit light as they move through the atmosphere. This light is what is seen as the auroras, and it is much brighter than Earth's auroras due to the fact that the Io's magnetic field is much stronger. The auroras created by Io are also different from Earth's in that they are usually green or blue in color rather than red or yellow. The auroras of Io can be seen from Earth, but they are not visible to the naked eye. They can be observed using specialized equipment such as the Hubble Space Telescope. It is also possible to observe the auroras using ground-based telescopes, but they will appear fainter than when they are seen through a space telescope. The auroras of Io are an amazing phenomenon, and they offer insight into the power of Moon's magnetic field. Although Earth does not have a magnetic field strong enough to create auroras, understand how Io's auroras work can help us better understand the interaction between the solar wind and planetary magnetic fields. This knowledge could have a variety of applications, such as helping us better predict space weather and the effects of charged particles on other planets and moons. The discovery of Io's auroras is just one of many exciting discoveries made about this moon. Its strong magnetic field and intense volcanic activity make it an interesting target for further study, and its auroras offer a glimpse into the power of the solar wind. As we continue to explore the moons of Jupiter, it is likely that we will uncover even more amazing facts about Io and its unique characteristics. Europa Europa is one of the four largest moons of Jupiter and has become one of the most studied moons in the solar system. Europa is the smallest of the four moons, but it is also one of the most intriguing. Its exploration has revealed a number of exciting features that make it unique and particularly interesting. It is the smallest of the four Galilean moons, and yet it has the most fascinating features of all. Uniquely, Europa has an icy crust that covers a global ocean of liquid water beneath. This implies that Europa could potentially host some form of life in its depths, as the environment of the ocean is thought to be capable of supporting life. Europa's exploration began with the Galileo mission, which was the first mission to fly by the moon. It revealed a number of features that set it apart from other Galilean moons. 
including its smooth surface and lack of impact craters. These features are thought to be the result of its icy crust, which is constantly being repaired by the cycling of water from its ocean. The mission also revealed evidence of tidal heating, which is believed to be responsible for the presence of the ocean. Since the Galileo mission, Europa has been the subject of several further explorations. These have included flybys from the Cassini and New Horizon missions, and a dedicated mission using the ESA's JUICE spacecraft. These missions have revealed much about Europa's composition, structure, and environment. One of the most interesting findings was the presence of hydrothermal vents, which are thought to be a potential source of energy for microbial life. The most detailed exploration of Europa to date has been the Europa Clipper mission, which is set to launch in the 2020s. This mission is the first of its kind and will provide the most comprehensive exploration of the Moon. The exploration of Europa has revealed a number of exciting potentials for the Moon. The presence of its global ocean and hydrothermal vents indicate that the conditions for life may exist on the Moon. The upcoming Europa Clipper mission will help further explore these possibilities and could potentially reveal the presence of life beneath Europa's icy crust. The exploration of Europa is a fascinating example of the potential for life beyond Earth. The combination of its icy crust, global ocean, and potential for hydrothermal vents makes it a very promising target for the search for life. The upcoming Europa Clipper mission will provide the most comprehensive exploration of the Moon yet and could potentially reveal the first evidence of life beyond Earth. Ganymede The third of Jupiter's moons to be explored is Ganymede. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system and is the only moon to have its own magnetic field. NASA has discovered evidence that suggests that Ganymede may have an ocean beneath its icy crust, just like Europa. This could mean that Ganymede may also be a potential host for life. It was first discovered in 1610 by Galileo Galilei and is the third largest moon in the Jovian system to be explored by spacecraft. It is the only moon in the solar system known to have a magnetic field, which was first discovered by the Galileo spacecraft when it passed by the moon in 1996. The moon is composed of a mixture of rock and ice, with the ice likely making up a majority of its composition. Ganymede is a highly cratered moon, with its surface bearing many impact craters from collisions with comets and asteroids. Its surface is also covered with a layer of dark reddish material, likely from melted ice. Ganymede is thought to have an ocean beneath its icy surface, which is made up of a combination of water and other materials like ammonia and salts. The ocean is likely to be in the region of hundreds of kilometers deep and could contain more water than all the oceans on Earth combined. Ganymede's ocean may contain some of the same ingredients that are present in life on Earth. This suggests that Ganymede could be a potential host for life, although this has yet to be confirmed. Scientists are currently trying to send a probe to Ganymede to investigate further. The presence of an ocean beneath the Moon's surface could also explain why Ganymede has a magnetic field. This is because the liquid ocean is likely to be in contact with a rocky core, and the movement of the liquid could generate a magnetic field. The Moon is also tidally locked to Jupiter, meaning that one side of the Moon always faces Jupiter, while the other side is always facing away. This means that one side of the Moon is always in darkness, while the other side is always in sunlight. The part of Ganymede that is exposed to sunlight is covered in ice, while the part that is in darkness is covered in darker material. This suggests that the material on the dark side of the Moon is likely more porous than the ice on the sunny side, allowing liquid to flow through it more easily. The exact composition of the material on the dark side of Ganymede is unknown, but scientists have speculated that it could be made up of a mixture of minerals and organic compounds, like methane and ethane. This material could provide an energy source for any possible life forms on the Moon. The discovery of Ganymede's ocean has opened up a whole new realm of possibilities for life in our solar system. While there is still much that is unknown about Ganymede and its ocean, scientists are continuing to investigate the Moon in the hopes of uncovering further secrets. In the future, Ganymede's ocean would become 
even more accessible as technology advances. This could lead to the development of robotic probes that can explore the depths of the Moon's ocean, or even human missions that could explore the surface and the subsurface. The exploration of Ganymede could lead to some exciting discoveries about the Moon and its potential for hosting life. It could also lead to future missions to other moons in the solar system, as these could potentially be home to some of the same ingredients that are present on Ganymede. Whatever the outcome, the exploration of Ganymede is sure to be an exciting journey of discovery. The answers that are found could help us to understand more about our own planet and the wider universe. It could even mean that we discover the first signs of life beyond Earth. Callisto Callisto is the outermost and farthest moon of Jupiter and is the second largest moon in the solar system. It was discovered by Galileo Galilei in 1610 and was named after the mythological nymph Callisto, who was associated with the Greek god Zeus. Callisto is the most distant of the four Galilean moons and is the least explored of the four. This is due to the extreme distance from Earth, which makes it a difficult target for spacecraft to reach. Callisto orbits around Jupiter at a distance of 1.88 million kilometers and takes 16.7 days to complete one orbit. The moon has a diameter of 4,800 kilometers, making it the second largest moon in the solar system after Saturn's largest moon, Titan. It is also the least dense of the four Galileans moons, with a density of 1.82 grams per cubic centimeter. The surface of Callisto is covered in ancient, heavily cratered terrain, making it the most heavily cratered object in the solar system. The surface is thought to be at least 4 billion years old, making it the oldest surface in the solar system. It is also the most heavily irradiated object in the solar system, with radiation levels 200 times greater than that of Earth. Callisto's atmosphere is very thin, composed of just 0.02% carbon dioxide and trace amounts of molecular oxygen. The moon is tidally locked to Jupiter, meaning that the same side of the moon is always facing Jupiter, and the same side of Jupiter is always facing the moon. This creates a unique environment at which the entire surface of the moon is constantly exposed to the intense radiation of Jupiter. The interior of Callisto is thought to be composed of a rocky core surrounded by a thick layer of ice with a possible water ocean below. This was revealed by NASA's Galileo spacecraft, which flew by the moon in 1996. The spacecraft detected an unusually strong magnetic field around the moon, which is likely caused by a subsurface saltwater ocean. This ocean is estimated to be between 10 and 100 kilometers deep and may be the largest ocean in the solar system. Callisto is thought to have a subsurface ocean of liquid water. The evidence for this comes from the Galileo mission, which detected strange features on the surface of the Moon that could only be explained by a subsurface liquid layer. This liquid layer is thought to be about 100 kilometers deep and may contain traces of life. The potential for life on Callisto was further evidenced by NASA's Juno mission, which conducted flybys of the Moon in 2016 and 2017. These flybys revealed an abundance of organic compounds on the Moon's surface, suggesting the presence of a subsurface biosphere. The exploration of Callisto has revealed some surprising findings, including evidence of a saltwater ocean beneath the Moon's icy crust and the potential for a subsurface biosphere. While the exact nature of the Moon's interior remains unknown, the exploration of Callisto has opened up the possibility of new discoveries and a better understanding of this distant moon. The exploration of Callisto has also been important in the study of Jupiter and the other moons in its system. Callisto's position and size makes it an ideal target for studying the formation and evolution of the outer solar system. By studying the moon's surface and interior, researchers can gain a better understanding of the formation of planets and moons, as well as the processes that shape them over time. The exploration of Callisto has also been important in the search for extraterrestrial life. The discovery of a subsurface ocean on Callisto suggests the potential for a habitable environment, making it an attractive target for a search for life. The exploration of Callisto has also been important in the study of the history of the solar system. By studying the age and composition of the Moon's surface, researchers can gain a better understanding of the formation and evolution of the solar system. This can help researchers to better understand the history of our planet and the formation of other planets and moons in the solar system. The exploration of Callisto has revealed some exciting findings and has opened up the possibility of new discoveries. With more exploration and research, researchers may uncover cover more evidence of a subsurface ocean and the potential for life. The exploration of Callisto 
has been an important step in our understanding of the formation and evolution of the solar system and could lead to the discovery of extraterrestrial life elsewhere in the solar system. That concludes our exploration of the four largest moons of Jupiter. We hope you've enjoyed learning about these amazing discoveries made by NASA. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment to let us know what you think about the documentary. Thank you for joining us on this amazing journey of discovery.